we've got to talk about the news that broke today that I just saw on social media that left me kind of surprised and a bit taken back to be honest because I've been a fan of this uh, party for a while from afar it's not something I'm generally interested in to be honest maybe because I'm a bit of a prude and a bit of a you know Christian boy deep down and a bit scared of these type of places in general even though in my head I might think like I'm, I'm, I'm that guy but really in real life I'm not so I'm talking about the stuff that's been happening with Crossbreed UK sucks positive party Crossbreed cancels events and found the steps down amid storm of allegations pretty wild right the management team will run operations going forward according to a statement published yesterday so i saw this posted on social media earlier today and i think someone was talking about the founder and using his actual government name and i was like oh dumb is that the guy and he said yeah that is the guy that runs it i was like damn which is absolutely crazy that they're into this situation but again it just highlights a ever increasing problem i guess in nightlife overall that i've kind of noticed over the last what few months or years that i've been covering this stuff on this pod even though i've been involved in the scene for a while but in terms of talking about it extensively i have noticed common things that keep happening especially weirdly enough within the kind of old underground type scene which i feel like was always a response to the commercialization of dance music in general right these people who go to these sort of events maybe didn't feel comfortable going to the commercial normie type ones you set up your own thing to create a quasi safe space quote in quotation marks and to have people from your own community feel comfortable to welcome into a place to build a community blah 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 showcase new eyes and then you run into the same issues that the people in the general public run into when they go into their nights out so that's a part of the interesting part of it for me but let's read the article it says as follows uk sex positive party crossbreed has cancelled three up-and-coming events confirmed the permanent unseating of its founder alex warren aka kiwi published yesterday november 15th from crossfeed's private instagram account the statement said that the party's management behind the post management team had this week been made aware of as serious allegations according to the post warren subsequently took the decision to step down permanently and had control the operations to the management team earlier today warrants who uses the term the pronouns they them published their own statement on their own private instagram account i have to give alex warren credit here only because when i covered the story regarding lobster ferryman let me not uh, speak out of turn whoever whatever label that thing he runs um what's his name what's the guy's name again the guy that has the flipping meme page you know who i'm talking about anyway when he was involved in whatever he was involved whenever when he was accused of taking advantage of that young girl who came down from something scotland and that story went some kind of viral within our little community i was the first to say that i thought it was really like distasteful and kind of a bit of a bad move from the guy who got accused of what he got accused of to number one come out swinging and essentially kind of victim blame it felt like when he was reading a statement even though he kind of obviously yeah he wanted to defend himself but it did sound like his victim blame victim blaming sorry and also when i went on the site and checked the record label they have so many artists that have released stuff on the label that he obviously founded and i thought at the time it was really disappointing that he didn't just step down in terms of taking the heat off of some of his artists that are on the label because i remember i followed a couple of them i think it might have been d dan i think it was somebody else also who other fans were then hitting up and getting in their comments and attacking them and saying hey why haven't you made a statement why have you said anything blah blah blah, blah. so he kind of unnecessarily put his other artists who are on the label under a constant barrage of comments and tweets and whatnot so at least with this warren guy at least he's decided to step down voluntarily um even though you know it might be because the allegations are a lot worse than what we've heard so far that could be the reason but still the fact that he stepped away which has allowed there to be some distance now so it can kind of be a thing of like okay he's the he's the bad guy or he's the bad person and the organization itself isn't rotten to the core and the team can maybe um fix whatever issues were going on behind the scenes and try and make it right maybe maybe Cosby statement also confirmed the cancellation of three upcoming events in Corsica and blah de blah 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 the anonymous account was initially set up in response to two posts on Crosby's official Instagram account uh, account sorry page on November the 10th the first post featured an infographic about why making assumptions about straight passing sex was 
Eagles biphobic and transphobic. <laughs> that even just sounds insane, right? But hey, the Sika Post apologized for the per first, which was met with fierce backlash from the trans and gay communities. Both po posts received dozens of comments, all of which are now hidden because the crossbreed turned off the comments, which is awful, right? That's always a sign of guilt. When you turn off comments, delete comments, or go private, that I think is a sign of guilt. I know people do it for their sake of their mental health because you don't want to be bombarded with, you know, loads of people's negative thoughts on you at one time but i think if you've been accused of what you've been accused of take your licks respond in due time you know take your way take yourself away from social media recover recoup regroup and then address it with a clear mind later on but this idea of turning off things and you think that's going to stem the flow if anything it makes people even more agitated and more angry to be honest but hey it continues article here and then yes they found in 2019 crossbreed combined a sex positive ethos house and the techno bookings it mostly ran events in london manchester clubs such as the cross cause fabric color factory and hidden a record label also launched 2009 read crossfeed and world statement in full below so this is crossby's official comment it says this week crossby management team are made aware of some serious accusation put forward by anonymous meme page against alex the founder of crossbreed these allegations came as a huge shock to all of us alex has made the decision to step down permanently from crossbreed and hand over control of the organization to the management team they will not have any he, they will not have any involvement with crossbreed moving forward and will be making the statement in due course we know the impact of the allegations will affect many of the people and community for this reason we have made the decision to cancel our party this sunday and if i'm not if i'm not mistaken maybe the first five or so yeah no let's say it might be the first or second party they did corsica studios because they were doing these sunday part day party type things at color factory and then they had to move and then they said they announced recently oh hey we've announced a new home it was a big affair everyone was celebrating and you know being really happy in the comments so it's, it's a bit of a big blow to be honest i'd imagine the social matches are tomorrow and our party at hidden next saturday will also not be going ahead all ticket holders will receive a refund for these events please do recognize we as individuals are dealing with a lot and are doing our best to make the plan to make a plan that will best support our community at the moment we will have less capacity to check dms if you need to speak with one of our team urgently please email the emails there please take care of yourselves and each other the guy alex um kiwi responded and said as follows uh or the person i apologize for the pronoun misuse here it says as some of you might be aware last week crossbreed released an infographic that caused a lot of division amongst our community it was misguided tone deaf and irresponsible i accept responsibility for the message and the harm caused in response many people feel angry part of this anger included accusations that i'm queer baiting profiting off the community wow i didn't know that is that what they okay i've been misgendered over and over again and continue to be my sexuality has been questioned by people who have never met me and don't know me in my life so what are people are trying to accuse him of pretending to be queer so that he can hook up with more girls or something or they can hook up with more girls is that what people are saying yo that is mad if true i want to be clear i've never taken a salary or dividend from crossbreed money i've received from crossbreed are dj fees that were in line with my rate and rent contribution towards the crossbreed office and storage in my house i have never been paid for a full-time role i've worked since its inception our response to the infographic was an anonymous instagram page that began sharing memes some inaccurate and false stories before finally making some serious accusations or allegations sorry and coming offline the most serious accusation made on that page were not specific but due to their nature and impact is having on the crossbreed team and the wider community i decided to step down from my role at crossbreed and all involvement with crossbreed moving forward i'll be giving the brand and the overall ownership over to the team that is running it i acknowledge how much harm is happening right now and part of this how part of this is how publicly this is taking place this is many people's lives many of whom have had no part in the harm that i've said i've done please remember that when sharing you can't really say that if you're the person being accused i, can't, I don't know what the term is i'm trying to use but you just can't say that because essentially these things have been happening in private behind closed doors people have been too scared to say anything because crossbreed's name carries a lot of weight even for myself i don't even know who they, these people i don't even go to the parties and i'm kind of respectful and reverent of what they've created so much so that i have a story time to share when i went to Berkeley, and this might be one of the most recent times actually i think it might be the time when i said hi to juliana juliana huxtable actually and i kind of got a <laughs> cold shoulder and i was like okay no more hi to djs <laughs> she just thought oh what's this why is this guy bothering me but i just literally want to say hi you had a good set but hey it didn't come across the best but anyway i was in Berghain having a good time went to panorama bar was jamming and then who do i see across the room and in panorama bar it's flipping kiwi from crossbreed i was like oh rah let me go over and say hi and also i wanted to inform kiwi from crossbreed that i'd love to purchase some crossbreed merch and they should look into making some hoodies or t-shirts with the logo because i love everything about the flipping party but i would never probably go because it's not really my thing the whole kink and sex party thing so i had a bit of a power and that 
was it. And then in the midst of this quick conversation we're having like a minute, two minutes, you know, me with my eyes looking at CDs and whatnot, this girl was in, I think one of the little corridor things next to the stairs and kind of monging out in the corner, looking really distressed and whatnot. And then I immediately went over, oh, you're right. No, I think someone else went over that we're in a group with, maybe it was a girl, went to speak to the girls on the floor. Then I went over to kind of say something, hey, are you all right? And I reached out, going over to say, are you all right? To check on her and kind of put my hand on her shoulder, just like, hey, you're right. Cause I think she was kind of falling over. And then the Kiwi guy was like, hey, hey not touching, not touching, kind of like thing. And I was like, I was like a bit frozen. Like, oh, what do you mean? No touching. I'm just trying to make sure she's okay. I didn't really understand what was going on. But again, it's loud like I don't really pay much attention to it. So got her up. And I think me and the other girl that I was dancing with, we were trying to help her out, but she was off her face on GSB or something. GHB, sorry, or something. And then eventually me and the girl that I was with on the dance floor ended up taking this lady who was clearly off her head and trying to get her to find her friends. And eventually we found her friends. And let's say her friends looked a bit scatty. So it was clear that they were all enjoying whatever they must have took. I'm assuming it was GSB and they're all off their face. So it wasn't that big of an issue, but in general, we ended up finding them. Anyway, at the time, I remember thinking to myself, like, why did he do that? Like, it's kind of like when somebody, you know, when you're talking and somebody wants to do like a kind of a passive aggressive son and you're talking really loud you're talking really fast i'll be like oh can you just quiet down a bit would you mind slowing down how you speak you're talking too fast or or someone does shh that kind of thing it just felt a little bit it kind of felt a little bit passive aggressive and a little bit unnecessary yeah because he was basically acting as if i was trying to flip in you know assault this lady by putting my hand on her shoulder and checking if she was okay and it wasn't even like a hand like a lingering it was literally like i was she was about to fall over i was kind of holding her like this and the funny thing is we both ended up me and the other girl ended up holding her because she was like wobbly all over the place all the way away until her friends and then when she finally found her friends she kind of just sprung into life again which was kind of weird to see but maybe you know would let us know that there was some other issues going on there who knows i remember that happening and be like that guy is why would you do that do you know what i mean i just went over to you and flipping essentially got on my knees and gave you fellatio by praising your brand and now here two seconds later you're trying to make out as if i'm doing something untoward to a stranger it's like why would you do that i only bring that up to say isn't it interesting the people who speak the loudest and about exclusivity and all this sort of stuff i know it's not a safe space because they put out a post that someone alerted to me on twitter that they don't actually say it's a safe space they categorically say kosh isn't a safe space but still they create this community and this platform and this party series to accommodate people within i would imagine the flinter lgbtq and queer scene who are into kink but don't want to go to conventional sex parties and stuff they want to f- you know find a safe space or you know a- an accommodating space for them let's say isn't it funny that those people are the ones being accused of what they're being accused of isn't that funny right right isn't that hilarious i find in that regard the thing that's distressing about this for me looking at it from an outsider's point of view that's not involved at all in this scene is that i'm pretty sure given how small the scene is and given there's some people on social media especially on instagram who are follow who are quite well known and you'd call them sex positive influencers or kink influencers i haven't heard a peep from them regarding this issue and i'm pretty sure this is well known i don't know what bit of the allegations are true i don't know if the guy did what they've been accusing him of or if he didn't sorry or they did what he'd been accused of what what they what they been accused of or not who knows but i'm pretty sure these allegations aren't new or aren't something that people have just found out now because this meme page went out there and i find it also interesting how the meme page was the only way people found out about this thing and obviously now the meme page has been taken down because whoever set it up got cold feet or maybe got threatened behind the scenes with legal you know consequences but i just find it interesting how people talk a big game in this scene or in just this you know small scenes overall about the need to hold accusers accountable especially when it's stuff involving people in the quote-unquote normal world especially if imagine this happened in the tech house scene how these same people will be going off about how unsafe it is about how there's always predators especially when it be when it kind of is directed towards cis presenting or cis gendered males and whatnot and when it involves people within their own community they're all stum. it is a bit horrible to see i'm not going to lie it's a bit horrible to see because in general not speaking about these things openly and not really um, addressing things holding people accountable has essentially led to the position that they're in now where potentially some people might have been harmed some people might have been harmed in a way that could be completely avoidable if this was out there in the public but because things have been said behind the scenes hush hushy you have to be in this you have to be around to know certain things things kind of go by the wayside and i think it's really 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 horrible i think some of the allegations that they put out there have been uh, posted here that i found on twitter there's kind of a bit of a roundup on here that says the following crossbreed put up his apology post which gets criticized for being vague a meme page pops up making fun of the situation called crossbreeds crossbreeders world 
which encourages anonymous submissions to Kiki about the drama. The meme page is immediately blocked by Crossbreed, LMAO. The anonymous submission quickly turned into a reveal, some serious shit about the event, worker mistreatment, dangerous and queer phobic door policy. <sighs> In imagine having a queer phobic door policy at a place like Crossbreed. Honestly, oh, crazy, man. Inadequate training around keeping events to go as safe. The meme page admin puts up a story saying they won't be posting anymore as things have gotten very serious than they expected, which is very fair, but not before posting the most serious allegation. Multiple victims allege that the person who runs Crossbreed Alex is a megalomaniac, serial abuser, assaulter, harasser, and general danger. Shortly after this, the meme page then is deleted and Crossbreed deletes his comments on their most recent and highly criticized pages, but they didn't delete their hint. Um, but again, like I said, it's just a real shame, but it makes me wonder also if this is just part and parcel of what happens in nightlife, because essentially we've seen, or I've seen accounts of abuse or harassment or whatever it may be in all of these kind of small alternative underground scenes that I feel like were a response to the commercialization of dance music. You look at stuff like Possession, they had an issue happen where one of their founders had to step down because they got accused of abuse. You look at obviously what's happening at Crossbreed. You've got that thing. I forgot what sex party that was, but there was a sex party that happened somewhere in Hackney Wick where unfortunately one person got raped or something i forgot where it, i forgot i think if you guys remember i remember reading about that so clearly there's an issue sort of something that kind of covers the whole breadth of flipping dance music and nightlife in general it's not something that's only kind of limited to the, to the business techno side of things and whatnot it definitely is something that affects everybody and it's a real shame more so that it affects the underground and sort of what i deemed it to be the alt scene because i always feel like those guys and girls and however else they identify do those parties or whatever it may be as self-service things they don't do them to get rich they do them because they don't feel like there's a space out there that they can be their true selves and party and frolic and do all the things that they like to do so they go and set these things up for other people who feel like them and then when they get there the same issues that they're kind of running away from in the general public in the general spaces is following them in those kind of places and it's a bit distressing it's a bit discouraging but the hope is when things come to light when things are you know uh, brought to light that hopefully things can be addressed and there can be some healing and there can be some restructuring of things to get things back up to where they need to be to because i don't know i feel like now we have some of the best parties out at the moment we have probably one of the best scenes i feel like at the moment in london in terms of range of parties and genres and people that you can go see on any given weekend and it'll be a real shame if these sort of events would start to like put people off to go to these sort of parties because at the end of the day you know they still were able to build you know this whole event from being a one-off party here and there to something that was happening every single sunday across the country you know selling bits and bobs online and whatnot having great pictures online an interesting ethos i will say the best ethos but a very clear and defined ethos that people you know some people got behind some people didn't like but definitely something that people could kind of follow and and maybe interpret in their own way or start their own thing bloody blah, blah 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 so it would be a shame if this kind of did affect things negatively overall going forward which i don't think it will because i think there's plenty of other parties out there that are doing things right and don't suffer from all these crazy crazy allegations and stuff that's going on but it's just pretty wild to see it happening in real time and it's also pretty wild to hear the deafening silence amongst some of the bigger people involved in the scene in terms of commenting about it to be honest we would expect a lot more self-policing a lot more accountability in this i know if it's not you're not involved it's hard to kind of put your two cents out there if it clearly isn't something that you've done but i don't know man For a lot of these people have a lot to say about general topics with involved within the king community but then when something like this happens to one of the biggest party series um surrounding that whole scene um most of them are completely quiet which is quite weird but hey i guess we all have our own interest to cover in it and protect i guess we all have our own interest to cover and protect